Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode of Unbottleneck, where we provide practical solutions to common digital marketing problems. I'm Monique Quarles, digital PR specialist at Wiedemann Consulting Group, and I will be your host for this episode to talk about something that I do on a daily basis, which is link building. I'm really excited about this episode because I have digital PR superstar, Will Hobson here with me to unlock all of the cheat codes to earn links to some of the most influential publications online, such as Vogue, Mashable, BuzzFeed and Forbes. So just a little background about Will. He is the PR director at Rise at 7, which is the fastest growing search first creative agency in the world, which is located in Sheffield and London. And he also has over eight years of experience working with some of the world's largest brands, such as Bloom and Wild, Misguided, Pretty Little Thing, and Game. And might I also add, he is a lover of Prosecco. So I knew that we were going to be friends as soon as I saw that. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much for being a part of this um, this interview with me. I know that um, it is nighttime where yeah, you are so as your day is it's like 20 to 4 20 to 5 so in the afternoon so i'm just in my last <laughs> call of the day so we're just winding down now but um right. thank you so much for having me on this is gonna be a really fun chat absolutely absolutely so you have me fresh in the morning so <laughs> So I'm fresh and, and ready for the for this interview with you. So I really, really appreciate you hopping on with me um, and joining me for a conversation about all things link building. My favorite thing. My favorite thing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so um, before we even get started, tell us a little bit more at Rise at 7 in your role as a PR director. Yeah, no problem. So my role at, at Rise is to oversee the PR team in both our Sheffield, London, soon to be Chicago offices, which is super exciting. And um, we're also expanding out into um, Europe. So we've got people that cover um, Germany, Spain, France, the Netherlands. So super, super exciting to kind of expand out to Europe as well. But my role is to, to make sure that we're delivering the, the most amazing results for our clients. So really being an active, um, active role on a lot of our larger kind of accounts. So from things like Pretty Little Thing, we're working with a few different other fashion brands in the US, um, which is super exciting. So I kind of lead that offering um, as well as working really closely with the wider team. So we come up with some really cool campaigns as well as like one of my favorite things to do is reactive news jacking. So jumping on loads of different trends. So I know one that you've seen this week, which was really cool was with the Nicki Minaj piece that we've done. And um, we basically released yeah. that the um, sales for Crocs were up by 4,000% after Nikki was spotted in her pink Crocs. So we actually released that as a figure for one of our clients and it is like blown up. Like Billboard Magazine have been covering it, um, US Weekly, US Daily, we've had People Magazine, like everyone um, across the US, UK and um, Europe has been covering that story. So thanks, Nikki. She's brought all the links, which has been amazing. Um, but yeah, like... My yeah, right. she's really helped us, but that's a little bit about me. Like my, I have a pair too. <laughs> I know you've you've got your pair. Every to be fair, everyone in the office yeah. has been buying Crocs, like because it's going absolutely wild. Just as a bit of a joke as well, because they've been like mad for from PR for us. So yeah. I kind of lead that and my background's traditional PR originally and then moved over to digital about eight years ago. So worked on all sorts of industries, not just fashion, like finance, travel, automotive, basically anything, any brand we've worked with. So yeah, it's a little bit about me. That's good. Okay, so so since you said that you that you started in the traditional realm of, um, of PR. Yeah. Can you kind of give some examples of some key differences that you see with traditional versus the digital? Yeah, model? yeah, definitely. I think it's it's similar tactic. So I'd say we use the same tactic, but with SEO knowledge. So making sure that we're doing it for SEO purposes. <coughs> I'm really sorry, but it's a bit stuck in my throat. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's better. Um, it, and it is basically like, I think it's almost like PR supercharged is how I see digital PR versus traditional PR. And we always, from a digital point of view and, and link building, we're always trying to make, we're always trying to drive people to the site. So everything that we create has content on site or something cool to link back to and a reason to link, but also the value, I think we look into it a little bit more. So like, for example, some of the brands that I've worked with, we've been able to say, well, 
we've got you featured in all these publications, but that's also drove X amount of revenue for the brand. So I think we can kind of see the impact a little bit more of our PR efforts versus traditional PR, right. rather than just like, I got featured in the New York Times and that's it. Right. So you can you can see that conversion. Yeah. In, in, in and also time. seeing the wider business impact, I think is is a lot more kind of important a lot more is you can see it a lot more through digital pr right now i will say a very significant part of seo is link building so in simple terms what would be your definition of link building like for somebody who doesn't know anything about it who has <laughs> never heard about it like let's say explain it as if, as if you were explaining it to your yeah mom. so how i kind of explain it to my mom all the time is Google ranks you on a, a number of different factors. And one of those factors is links. So we want to create really cool stories for other websites to link back to us. So how we do that is by creating cool stories that are going to generate links in press. So we're going to create news stories. We're going to create kind of viralness, if that's a word, a viral activity that's going to generate those links so that we have a massive impact from a search point of view. And how I look at it is the more people that are talking about you, the more people, the more that Google is taking note and listening and rewarding you for that. So it's almost like a mention in the press is almost like someone giving you a point. And the more points you have, the more rewards you're going to get from Google. Right. So it's like, so it's like an endorsement. Exactly. Yeah. Got you. So what also goes into a successful link building strategy? So what are some keys to success that you say would go into um, a link building strategy? I think definitely starting off with some sort of trend. So finding what's going to be shareable and what's going to be known that's going to correlate with your idea. So we, we do a, lo a lot of different strategies for, for link building, but they all start with story first. So they're all about creating a really, really cool story that is going to get spoken about. So what we tend to do is use all sorts of different tools from things like Vosumo, um, which is a really cool content tool. Um, and you can kind of see what content has been shared the most around a subject. So say, for example, I'm working for a fashion brand. I'll then look at dresses might be one of the areas that I'm trying to have an impact on from an SEO point of view. So we want to build campaign ideas around that dresses section. So we'll drop dresses into um, Busumo and we might see loads of different trending subjects around that. So things that we've done in the past for PLT is um, we've looked at different categories. So obviously um, 101 Dalmatians, Cruella, the new film with um, Emma Stone in it is coming out next month. So what we've done for PLT is create a Dalmatian category to go alongside that film because it's that popular culture and that trending subject we're then making that relevant and newsworthy so it's like pretty little thing launch a new cruella collection to coincide with the film um, and we kind of jump we we use existing products that they have and create really cool stories so the main element is making sure that you've got a really strong story and it doesn't matter who that story is for so i i hear a lot of myths that it has to be a certain brand or you have to have a big brand to have an impact and create a story that's not true at all i've worked I've created digital PR campaigns that have been for like people who sell radiators, people that do like really boring, dry subjects. So like insurance companies and, and things that aren't necessarily really sexy, but it's how you create a really cool story to make that sexy. And there's loads of elements to a campaign. But I think if you start off with that trend, you can then move forward and, and obviously think of that first rather than the execution. I think a lot of people get it wrong sometimes when they're kind of like, oh, I really want to do a world map. And it's like, well, that's not the story, the world map. The story is that every state's favorite, I don't know, I saw every state's favorite um, hand mixer this week and one was like a um, cooking piece. So that's like your story. Like we've done a piece recently looking at every state in the US's favorite superhero from MCU and from DC Comics and things like that. So we've, it's looking at what the story is rather than the execution, I think is super important. Right, right. No, that makes sense. So pretty much starting, starting. With yeah, you. definitely. Rather, and that sh should be your base and go in there first. So, um, so with with all of that being said, right. So, what do you think? Um, what do you think would be some best practices to be featured in those national publications? Like, what are some best practices to be able to even reach out to them to even be? Yeah. Featured? So, <clears throat> I think it's making sure, like I said, having that interesting story, but understanding what they want. So go into those publications first 
and and finding out what they want and how you can kind of give it to them. That's what, always something that we talk about at Rise is it's understanding what a journalist likes, what they're interested in, what subjects they cover, and also how they write their email, like their articles, sorry, so that we can match our email outreach to them. So what we tend to do is, what, again, when we're having that brainstorm and that ideation session, we'll have a list of publications by doing it like a link intercept, for example, that we want to we want to get on. So whether that is Vogue, whether that is BuzzFeed, but then we'll go to a specific area. So is it an editor of Vogue that we're wanting to target? And is it about fashion? What do they write about and how can we give them what they want? So that's a definite best practice, reading the publications that you're featured in for one. Like there's so many people that I feel like pitch to the wrong journalist by because they're not doing that little bit of in like research first of all so making sure you read where your pitch where you pitch basically is, is, right. a, is a top tip as well as understanding what they write and what they want make friends with them like as well like I know that's more of a traditional PR tactic to relationship building but it is super important but you can definitely do that over places like Twitter um which is really I, I do a lot of that through DM so I'll tend to follow a journalist always thank them if they've ever covered my story and then build up a bit of a conversation with them and a bit of a relationship so then you can understand mm -hmm. what they cover. And I think a journalist doesn't mind being spoken to like that in terms of like finding out, oh, hey, like I'd love to cover this. Like if you, what type of stories are you covering at the moment? And they'll tell you because they want as much help as possible, really. Right. Now, do you feel like you've gotten more success with email, Mark? Sorry, with email um, outreach or social media outreach? A mix of both. I'd say email outreach is not going anywhere. It's definitely still super important, but I think you can almost soft outreach by over social to see if a journalist is interested before you send them the email. They're still gonna wanna see your email because they wanna know the story. So I think email outreach is still super important, but it's just finding different ways to get in front of journalists. So again, that goes back to understanding what they want and then finding a way to give it them in, in a way that's not necessarily so boring boring because I imagine they're getting 400 emails a day with different right. stories so that's why your subject line is so important and so is your outreach email so mm -hmm. keeping that super concise and, and straight to the point and and more or less giving them this the way that we write our emails is we give them the story we write the story for them almost so we're kind of giving them as much information in the smallest amount of words possible I would say mm-hmm now with the now with sending the email, you said that the the subject line has to be on yeah. point and it has to be um, concise. And then same thing with the body of the pair. I mean, sorry, the the body yeah, of the email. Exactly. It also has to be concise. Yeah. So keep it keep it as short as possible. Yeah, short as possible. But you've still got to have enough details in there. So making sure you've like basically, I mean, because I've seen press releases that have come from other like more traditional areas, and they'll be like they'll have the email and then they'll attach a press release and there'll be loads of information. It just makes it really hard for the journalist to read their story. So we want to make it as easy as possible because we know how time sensitive and how much they don't have a lot of time. So we want to be basically want them to be able to click on our email and literally have that story there so that they're, they're just bought in straight away. So we have everything within that body of the email. We always start off with like a really cool um, header. So really cool subject line. Then also like an image, we go straight to the like, this is what the story is. We don't necessarily give like a big blurb of an intro to a press release. It's like straight to it um, and, and write the story as if they're writing it. So kind of in their language, in how they write their headlines and, and things like that. So it mimics their stories. Now, are you able to give an example of maybe one or two subject lines that you've done that has proven to be very successful in your outreach? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we've had a few ones for, I'll give you two kind of examples. So one is for a more personal finance related client. And this was in the UK market. And then I'll give you a US specific one. Um, but within the UK market, um, a lot of over the past, like obviously 12 months since the pandemic has been mad and crazy. Um, there's been a lot of like money saving and personal finance tips of like what to do as you start because more people are starting to go back to the office now. So we'll we tend to notice within the UK a lot of listicle type pieces so with numbers within them so a lot of the headlines are like five top tips to save money as you go back to work so that might be a really successful headline with us because we've noticed that they do 
listicle articles. So we'll then copy that and have um, either the number like five, seven or 10 um, of those top tips. So we'll have that in the headline. Like, These mm -hmm. are the five top tips to save money as you go back to the office and things like that. So that's like a headline that you would see in the UK right. press. So we mimic that into a story and, and that's always really successful. So again, noticing that. Um, I'm thinking one thing that we also notice at the moment, there's a bit of a trend with the headline, like you can now stay in a so we basically um we launched a i don't know if you that uh, we, we actually talked through this campaign on the source last week but it was um uh, called the royal caravan where we basically like turned a caravan like when you guys rented yeah it. like we did like turned it into Buckingham Palace. when you guys rented Rolls Royce, <laughs> yeah we rented the rolls royce and went away to, don't my expense yeah. accounts matt and drove to McDonald's. <laughs> so we um, we actually turned this trailer in America into Buckingham Palace. Um, so then we noticed a bit of a trend of a headline of like you can now stay in it. Like there's Airbnb did one in Malibu, I think it was, where it was like a Barbie Dream House. And it was like, you can now stay in Barbie Dreamhouse. So that you can now is a real trending headline that works for PR so much, especially in the travel space. So that's when we decided to go with like, you can now stay in a Buckingham Palace themed caravan this summer in the UK and things like that. So that's a real successful headline. So again, it's noticing again, what's happening and what's happening with competitors as well as what's happening across the press and how you can adapt that headline. I do always think like when I write my own headlines, I tend to write like 10 to 15 until you get the one that fits and feels right. Um, and again, it's by reading that press that I'm trying to land in. So a few different versions. Um, but yeah, I think just keep practicing and headlines and, and then you kind of perfect them. Yeah, because like, cause I'll say that, especially when it comes to to subject lines, I feel like I always do them, do them last. So I, I write the email first and then I go back and I try to, um, to do the subject line and I try to do it um, in a way where it's conversational or sometimes depending on what I'm writing about, sometimes I'll probably throw in like a common, a common yeah. phrase, right? So I know one of the most recent ones that I did was um, like for water, like for tap water yeah. quality. And one of the subject sub subject lines that I did was um, like, what's in the water? Or um, like, oh, that's water under the bridge. So like something yeah, like that. Yeah, where you, I like that. Yeah, like where, like where you try to keep it, you know, kind of general, um, just to kind of open up that window. So it's like, you know, they kind of, have already heard that yeah. phrase so it makes it look a little bit easier just to kind of get it going but i usually do the subject lines right after i i do the body of yeah the interesting because i do mine first i think it's mainly because i like mm -hmm. to like i try and i think that's the most important thing so i'm trying to nail it so i'm always like writing it writing it writing it out writing it around like i said i probably do about 10 to 15 um, always on a, like a notepad. Oh, where my notepad is full. Um, always on like a notepad as well. I always tend to like write them down and like like I don't know. I just I find it nice like just writing it on a piece of pen and paper and just like again because it's usually because I'm like on my computer looking at different headlines to compare it to and like playing around with a bit. So I think definitely it's good to almost A B test as well. Like we use Buzzstream. Um, that's amazing mm -hmm. for that. Like we we do a lot of A-B a, B testing when we launch our campaigns just so that we can see, okay, which which headlines get in the most opens, which ones get in multiple opens. Right. So we kind of know like how many times a journalist has opened our email so we can kind of see, okay, this one's working. We'll stick with that one. Go ahead with that one and, and kind of go for it. Um, so yeah, we do a bit, of, a bit of that testing first so you can kind of understand which one's working. Right, right. And that's and that's a good way to do it too, especially with the A B testing. So I usually do about about two to three different um subject lines as well, just to see which one does better, which one gets the most open rates or the most responses. Yeah. But that's really good yeah. um to to kind of write the subject lines first. Yeah. I may have to have to try that method and see how it works for me. Cause cause usually I always like honestly, most of the time I have about a hundred tabs yeah. open in my head. I hate so that. I'm like, it's I have nice. to get my thoughts yeah. out. <laughs> Yeah. And then once I get them out, okay, fine. Like, and now I can circle back to doing the subject line, but maybe I'll, tr I'll try it your way and see how yeah, that works I think, out for me. I think it's probably because we're thinking of that headline when we're doing the idea almost as well. Like mm -hmm. we're thinking in that, what, what our goal of a headline, what I always say to our team is like, if you can't tell me what your headline is now or summarize the story quickly, I don't think this campaign's right. Like, I don't think it's the, the right one to do. So you should be able to, 
summarize that quite quickly once you've come up with the idea because i'm like how what are you going to go to press with this what's what is the interesting hook right right now with that being said right now that we know what are some best practices what what we should do what are some link building tips to that would, um and strategies to avoid when it comes to email Ooh. outreach i think make sure kind of going back to our email <clears throat> we always make sure that everything is in the email so make sure you don't attach anything don't attach that imagery or the press release itself because you're probably going to hit spam filters of journalists Mm, so okay. we always do a Dropbox link, like to any imagery, any extra data that they need. So it's all in one place and it's not going to, again, hit any spam filters. So don't do that. Don't do loads of inter external links in your email. Like we tend to open mm -hmm. with like the campaign page and then close with the campaign page. And that is the only links within the email. There's no external links to like other data sources and stuff, because again, you might hit spam filters if you're sending loads of links through. Like, and also you're directing them away from where you want them to link. You want them to link to your campaign page. So don't throw them everywhere else. Um, I think mainly like the outreach process as well, don't change your headline and hooks too quickly and like your actual outreach email or your how it's going because I think people can get nervous if they don't get coverage straight away and then they'll change their email straight away and I'm like guys well, like, wait let it just breathe keep going until you've got some general facts that this isn't getting picked up and you've tried to get a bit of feedback try to at least see how many times are people opening it? So like I said, because we use Buzzstream, we can see once we've done a batch of outreach, uh -huh. how many times someone's opening our email. So if you're getting all ones, you know it's probably time to give this a bit of a, a spruce up or a bit of a change. But if you're getting multiple opens on things, you know it's right. interesting, you know people are going back to it. Um, so you can kind of gauge from there, but don't change too quickly, definitely. Um, it would be, be a few of my top tips as well. Oh, nice. Okay. No, that's good. That's definitely good to know. Now, um, when it comes to sending out emails, right, because I, I kind of ran into this issue when I first started link yeah. building. So when it comes to uh, people unsubscribing yeah. from your email, how you have that unsubscribe link at the very, very yeah. bottom. So if too many people hit that, that means that your that your email could possibly be blocked, yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah. It does, yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So like, so, so pretty much in order to, um, to avoid that, just making it, making it short, making sure that your, um, that your email doesn't end up in the spam yeah. folder by avoiding putting in, putting in too many, um, you said putting in too many yeah. links and then also putting in. Yeah, files. definitely. Yeah. Awesome. Now, um, I know that you mentioned uh, BuzzSumo and BuzzStream. Yeah. So what are some other link, link, link building tools that you So use? we use like more, so they're like our main tools that we use for link building. We also use like media databases. So we work with Roxil um, Media as well as like Vulio in the US. Um, we also use a lot of SEO tools. So like Ahrefs, Majestic, and um, mainly Ahrefs is like our best friend because we're always looking at yeah. Competitor yeah. campaigns, so always dropping the link to our competitor campaigns and seeing what backlinks have got like been built to that, as well as doing right. link intersects against our competitors to understand where our competitors getting featured, where we aren't, and how can we close the gap. And it just gives more inspiration when you're building that strategy of where to go. Um, so definitely, I feel like them are like three go-to tools. Like we've used, I've used loads of social listening tools in the past, like Brandwatch and Crimson Hexagon and, and things like that. But um, mainly they're my three go-to tools, I would definitely say that I use day in, day out. Yeah, agreed. Like I, I always use use Best Stream to organize my outreach campaigns, and then um, same thing like with Ahrefs, I um, use that as well. And it's a really, really good tool just to see what other backlinks that other that your competitors yeah. are getting, and especially because it helps when we're doing our seeding list. I always say to the team, like, make sure you've got at least ten competitor campaigns in there, so you could constantly look in at what everyone else is doing, where they're going, just so you, it just helps with your outreach that you're just constantly looking. So that's how you're going to learn the most when you've got that ear to the ground, really. Right. Now, also, um, speaking of your team, ex explain to us exactly what your link off competition is. Because uh, I saw so that you guys do that's that. That's between myself <laughs> and Carrie. So basically, me and Carrie started in the industry at like the same time. So we're very competitive. And um, she just basically, so James, who's our marketing manager, he was like, 
so which one of you would win in a link off and I was like well let's see so we're actually going to do it so we're both gonna, we've been doing it over Carrie keeps going on holiday though which keeps like pushing the link back back but we filmed quite a lot of it but basically what we're going to do is we're both going to build a PR campaign for Rise at Seven and just see who gets the most links basically um, and then have a little bit of so we mm-hmm. filmed a few different bits of it. So we're right, we're doing everything. So from the brainstorm to working with our data and creative teams, as well as like working on like um, the seeding list, the outreach email, the content and things like that are all going to be done ourselves. So yeah, it's going to be fun, but we'll, we will see who's going to win. Yes, I definitely have to have to keep up with the link off just to see who exactly is going to win this because you guys have done a great job just with building up a lot of momentum and you guys do a lot of great video content to keep people engaged, not a lot with a lot of the behind the scenes of your campaigns, but also within the internal culture of your company, which is something that I really really like. You guys do it. Yeah, so well. it's fun. I think it's because we're in mine and Carrie's head, it's like our own little reality show that we're, like, that we're forming <laughs> in our head. So I think that's why we keep doing it. But yeah, no, definitely it's really fun. Oh, absolutely. And for those of those who don't know, Carrie is the is the CEO of Rise of yeah, Seven. CEO and co-founder, Carrie Rose. Um Carrie Rose PR as we call her. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool. Now, um, now with Carrie, Carrie is 27, Well, right? she's just turned 28, yeah. 28, yeah. So how did, how do you think that, that that um impacts the culture? Having a 28-year-old SEO? I mean, sorry. Yeah. I think it's probably, I think it's great for our culture because it's kind of, it roots us in we're very down to earth and honest. And I think like when you, if you were working for a company that was a, a man in a suit that was, that was the CEO and, and you didn't feel, I feel like you would feel a bit far removed. Whereas with us, Carrie is, involved in absolutely everything and is at the heart of the business really and and kind of um, just kind of keeps us down to worth and keeps us who we are at Rise at Seven in terms of being honest being open when keeps us really young and fresh I would say so I think it's definitely pioneering especially to to have a young woman leading the business so well um, it's amazing. Obviously, Stephen Hood's her co-founder he's on the more of technical side and he's almost like how he's kind of more process driven a lot more like to it's just, they, they're almost like yin and yang that we would kind of say to describe them, uh, right. and each other. So I think that's why it works so well because once one person does one thing they're doing the other thing and being just as good at, at, at another another area of the business so I think that's why it works so well and I think within the people within the team it's like that like so certain people are process driven certain people are, are not and are, have strengths in other areas with unlocking creativity and and being really fun and, and different things like that so I think it's amazing having a young CEO for for our culture of the business and it also shows what you can do once you like almost set your mind to it definitely in a in a short space of time no exactly yeah i i totally understand that and i definitely agree with you especially when you go back to you know having that balance you know between between her and steven having that um that balance because the truth is in seo there's so many different areas like you have your um you have your technical yeah. side and then you also have like your creative side you have your um like you have your content side. So it's definitely um, important just to have that balance because the truth is we all can't do everything. Yeah, everyone can't do everything. Yeah, I mean, we try. (laughs) (laughs) Right, but like not not one person can can do everything. Yeah, no, definitely. Now, also, let me ask you this, right? Mm -hmm. Because I know I'm going back to earlier, we were talking about other industries that might not be as Okay. So... So one of the um, one of the industries that we work with um, is personal injury uh, law. So yeah. yeah, what would be in in your in your um, creative mind? What would be some creative um, ideas for link well, building? We, we, we've worked in people? personal injury laws quite a, quite a bit. So we've actually we did a campaign um, in the US with a company called Bader Scott. Um, and we did basically we did like a commercial with Saf from Tiger King um, and it was really really cool like we did loads of celebrity interviews so we like launched an exclusive with People magazine as like Saf's now stars in personal injury firm um, law commercial and then we also did a few different um, campaigns alongside that so we looked at how much you would get if you lost a limb in every state around the US because it was different and it was different costs so then we looked at like then also which animal you would get more if you got bitten by around the US so we created a a really cool like 
campaign page that had SAF's um, video in, but also had in like loads of really cool data hooks for the stories and things like that. So I definitely think you could you could be creative and also looking at like, I think an obvious way to go down that type of route is looking at like celebrities and what they've insured and things like that. Cause there's always famous uh-huh. things that like JLo has insured her legs for like $20 million and, and things like that. So I think there's loads of different fun ways you can go around it um, with personal injury. Definitely. That is so interesting. That's a really, really good idea about, um, about talking about the yeah, celebrities. Everyone, everyone loves celebs. Here. So like, I feel like, and they want to know, yeah. everyone likes celebrities and everyone is nosy. Like everyone wants to know how much money they're making. So <laughs> like that's, that's kind of opening that up and you could do it around certain things. So like, new celebrities so every time there's a new show and like like especially in the us there's so many publications that write just about the housewives and then just about like xyz so there's so many different ways that you can kind of kind of take that narrative and story and create something so it's just about like utilizing an interesting subject or popular culture making it relevant to your brand and then creating a cool story out of it right right and that and that brings up a good point too just like when it comes to to content and thinking about content because you also have your your content writers who are on your team so can you explain the the synergy that needs to happen between content writers and yeah so within our team how it works is all the prs write their um the prs and link builders write their copy for their campaign pages so they actually and that's so that they can fully understand what the campaign is so they do everything from kind of coming up with the idea briefing it into the rest of the teams then they like once the data has been pulled by our data team for example they'll then write that up into a campaign page then they'll then they'll write the outreach email then they'll outreach it so our content teams are because a lot of content is written for PR within within Rise, they're actually within the PR team. So a lot of PR execs, PR strategists, they actually write their content themselves. Um, and then we obviously just check over, make sure it's good from an SEO point of view. Nice, nice. Now, now um, let me just say this. So your company, as I mentioned before, you guys do a lot of great video yeah. content. So what are some other what are some other forms of of media or other forms of content that people can do to get engagement? Like if they're not comfortable with video, like what are some other ways that they can reach definitely people? through like we've done all sorts of different campaigns that have touched people through social. So whether it's going to be like a mm-hmm. social competition or imagery, like we've done a few things um, in the UK where we've kind of had campaigns that have been for link building, but then we've taken into account like Instagram and looked at doing a bit of influencer marketing and doing kind of content across there and then amplified it with PR and trends and different things. Like one thing that we're trying to do at the moment is kind of create our own trends. So take things that are happening on TikTok Mm -hmm. and almost like supercharge them with PR to make it trend. So obviously, I don't know if you saw like the Amazon leggings that went like viral on TikTok and everyone was trying to buy these Amazon leggings oh, like yeah. work out with them. Then it's like that we're trying to create that strategy. So again, so it, it might not be like video, but it'll be imagery that we post over TikTok. And then we're trying to create that story before and then amplifying it with PR to almost make it go viral quicker. Um, so things like that. So definitely like social Reddit's re- Reddit's amazing to drive traffic. So if you wanted to kind of create some content to not necessarily get links, but to drive traffic. So we've done things in the past where we've pulled data from Reddit and kind of found interesting subjects and then weave that into a story that's then been interesting to press. So there's, there's quite a few different ways, but I think social's a massive part because it's a real good amplification tool. I think anything that you can do through Giphy, Giphy's always fun. Like we create so many GIFs all the time. Like Mm -hmm. Carrie actually did like a full full Uh like Giphy SEO strategy. So if you, Rise at Seven's got its own Giphy account, we just create GIFs that we post on there and they get used loads. Like someone sent me a picture of me like from Giphy and was like, oh, I've been using this as like a GIF. And I was like, oh, that's hilarious. Like and I didn't even like, it was like friends of a friend who had been using it. So they didn't know it was me um, and things like that. So like gifts are really fun. So, cause, and especially because a lot of, a lot of brands, so especially in like the fashion travel industries, they have a lot of like video content that they can then turn into gifts. So that could be just an interesting way to get your brand out there and get your brand mentioned. And um, so that's a really fun way. 
Um, but yeah, I definitely think there's there's different ways that don't have to be video content. It could be like influencer marketing we try to put into PR or like social and and then out of we've started doing things that are a bit more offline as well so whether that's kind of like creating a billboard or Mm -hmm. creating like um any sort of kind of content that's going to be seen in the street and and things like that so there's different ways that you can kind of amplify your your digital pr campaigns and take them more than just for link building yeah and those and those are some really great ideas that you threw out i mean creating your own your own gifts i mean that's that's definitely (laughs) something that that gets to be and it's, and it's easily shareable too. It's definitely shareable content. So I think that that is um, a great idea that you definitely Amazing. threw out. Um, yeah. And then also um, just kind of wrapping up with it, with this last thing with newsjacking. So I know you talked about it a little bit earlier, but can you explain just a little bit, a little bit more depth what exactly news Yeah. So is? news checking is literally my favorite thing to do. I am obsessed with news checking. <laughs> so basically you can do news checking for any client and it, it falls into a few different forms so we tend to book it in the same as news jacking and thought leadership and reactive pr we tend to put it all in like one bucket but to go in a bit depth of depth of news jacking specifically that is basically jumping on a trending news subject or a breaking news story and offering commentary or offering stats or data from your brand to generate links and it's amazing at Mm -hmm. that, but also brand awareness. So we tend to use it as a supportive strategy. So we use it for all sorts of industries. So I'll give you a few examples. Ariana Grande had her wedding the other day and she posted a picture of her ring. So we basically work with a lot of jewelry brands. So we basically value the ring. Then we'll put a a comment out saying, Ariana's wedding band it is worth $250,000. And we'll like put a bit of a comment out from an expert at that jewelry brand. And, and that will be a link building exercise. And then you, with news jacking, the beauty of it is you start to build such good relationships with journalists that they then come back to you. So they'll be like, oh, we've just seen that Bethany Frankel's got engaged. Can you give us this, can you evaluate mm-hmm. her ring? Um, and things like that as well yeah yep on it so you start to like build really good relationships so that's just an example of doing it for like lifestyle and then finance we also do it so say there's like a breaking news story um tesla have made this is just made up but tesla have like made 80 percent of their staff redundant they've got rid of their jobs and we then put out a comment from a financial expert so we work with a lot of like cfd and forex traders and we would basically say okay Tesla have made all these redundancies. This is what it means and give a little bit of them, add an opinion to the article. And then they'll again tend to give us a homepage link back to our brand. So you could do it for finance. You can do it for travel. Like we're doing a few pieces at the moment with everything in in the UK specifically. We have like a fly list where we're allowed Mm -hmm. to fly to around the world. And they put it on like a green amber red system so we're just they basically released that last week so for all our travel brands that we work with we'll put out a comment just explaining the process and if you've got a holiday book this is what you need to do so it's again like adding an expert to a comment and article and google loves this strategy because it builds expertise authority and trust which is what google wants to give you like wants to see us from a site and what like it almost wants to give the user the best experience. So if we're helping to build that trust of that site, it's going to have an impact from an SEO point of view. So news checking is the best thing to do. Like we do it in fashion as well. Like fashion's really fun. Like anytime any celebrity is seen wearing something. So I obviously mentioned the Nicki Minaj piece earlier. We've done it in the past with Mm -hmm. like the royal family in the UK. So like if Kate Middleton's seen wearing a dress, we then see if like searches have increased for that dress. Um, Bridgerton was huge on Netflix. So basically when Bridgerton was released, like everyone's obsessed with Bridgerton, we saw corset, like sales for corsets had increased by like 30%. So we'd put that out as a story. So you can jump on loads and loads of different things depending on what what's happening. So that's kind of news jacking it in, 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 in essence. It's amazing. It's one of my favorite things to do because it's so fast paced. You have to, and with that, you have to move quickly or you lose it. Like if you don't, if you don't move fast, 
then like I always say to any clients that we bring on, like, look, if you can't do this fast, let's not do it because there's no point or mm -hmm. give us full control and we'll do it. And we just need to move really fast. So right. um, I'm super honest, but we've actually built out a full news jacking team. So there's over eight of us that are dedicated to this news jacking strategy um, mm -hmm. and that constantly news jack and, and it, like sat monitoring the news, waiting for things to happen, basically. Right. And that's, and that's a good thing that you mentioned too, with thinking on your feet, because a lot of this stuff, it ha it happens in real yeah. time and maybe within 24 hours is not going to be relevant. Exactly. Anymore. So you definitely have to be on your feet. And I think that that's also good because, um, cause I think a lot of the times, especially like for businesses, um, they typically tend to stay in their yeah. bubble when there's really an outside world out there that people are not just focused on your business all the time they're focused on what's going on around yeah. them they're focused on like what's trending so it's great to incorporate yourself into that's what we always say when, when we're working with brands like you could have a campaign that's on brand but no one's ever seen it whereas why well, you might as well have a campaign that's going to get spoken about and everyone's seen it and what we tend to do is i always say it's not so much an issue anymore with the brands that come to rise at seven because i think they know what they're they're getting themselves into they know that we're going to be a little bit out there and we're going to be a little bit crazy but like previous right. agencies that i've worked in i've always said to like look it's not going to be all about the brand, the idea. It can be a subject that is related to your brand. So I work with a payments brand, um, which is really B2B, but we focus on subjects like small business and things like that that are related to the brand, but aren't directly about it. Right. I think a, a really great time, though, to to do news jacking, at least an example that I have seen um, of people doing this really well, is during the Super yes, Bowl. Yes, Super Bowl's great. Yeah, yeah, I always see a lot of people doing that. Now, um, last question that I have for you, just in terms of news jacking, when is it not a good time to? Interesting, do that? you say this. So I think when it's when it's sensitive, I would leave. So if there's anything that's happening with that's just not a topic to get involved with, and also my advice is if you're questioning it, don't get involved. So I think like if mm -hmm. if something's like sensitive that's that's happened. So if we think back to like Meghan Markle, we wouldn't want to get involved in those types of com in that conversation because of the of what what the nature of the conversation was at the time. So I'd always just make sure that you're not like jumping on that those conversations. It's inappropriate and it's not really like because it's a, it's an actual serious issue. So like I wouldn't get involved with right. anything like that. So I I just think it's if something's sensitive and something's that's been you just kind of know it's not right. That's when it's time to not get involved and, and things like that. So it, like going back to thinking back to like Kendall Jenner, when everything happened with Pepsi, like you could get, you could news jack on that, but you wouldn't mm -hmm. because it's not appropriate. So like that, that's the, the right. so like if you're questioning that, that do, do you know what I mean? You say you shouldn't be, you shouldn't news jack on it. Definitely. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Cause I've definitely seen a lot of, um, a lot of companies who, as we say, like here in the U.S., like they they don't know how to read yes, the room. Exactly. So here, though, to... you know that's a big. I think yeah. working for agencies, you have to know how to read the room, like because yeah, no one's, and also it's just been it's been like aware aware of you like what's right and what's wrong. Definitely of, of what and kind of standing up for that. I think so. I always say to the team like, if you're questioning it, please do not do it. Like you should like right, and also <laughs> with news checking, there's so many opportunities. We don't need to jump on absolutely everything. Like and like I said, when it's when it's not appropriate, like don't. Don't yeah, do yeah. it. Yeah, much. yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> That's awesome. Awesome. That's great advice. Will, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and your expertise with us today. Like we've gone over email outreach, link building, news jacking, content writing. Everything. Like, we've been everywhere. Everything. Oh my goodness. I, I definitely uh, loved, love this call. I love um, all of your experience and your creative ideas that you shared. I'm sure that there is a lot um, that you have mentioned that a lot of people just can take and implement into their own strategy. So thank you so much for your no time. Um, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. And please tell the people where they can find you. Amazing. Yeah, well, you can find me over on Twitter. So I'm at Will Hobson. So find me over there. I'm on Instagram everywhere. Like if you want me, come and get me. <laughs> 
Right. <laughs> yes, and you can, and we could also have like virtual, uh, virtual. Oh my god, you should definitely. Well, like, I'm like, over to America, so if I'm ever in LA, I will let you know. We yes. can hang out. I'm a big fan. Please, a big fan. Please. I'm always um. I've been a few times, and we always kind of go stay. Obviously, because I'm a gay, we're going to stay in West Hollywood. So that's so. Obsessed, but yeah, I'll have to definitely let you know. We're we're, we're hopefully going to be coming over a little bit because obviously, as we open the Chicago office, I'm hoping that I'm going to get to go over um, because I've been working really closely with um, someone in our kind of who's going to be in our Chicago office for the past like six months. So I'm really excited to meet her in real life. Um, which will be good. So hopefully once things like loosen down and we're allowed to come over, I'll be over to the US. Yeah, uh-huh. Definitely. Absolutely. Yes, let me know because we're yeah. friends now. So I would definitely see you in WeHo. Yeah, I love the Abbey in WeHo. I love the Abbey. Um, where else is it cool? I can't, it was a couple of years ago when I was last there, but there's like the Abbey. Where else is really cool? What's that one that's like a cowboy place? Sean, that's can't remember what that's called. Yeah, there's like place? a cowboy, Ooh, and then uh, Mickey's and Hamburger Mary's. Love Hamburger Mary. Oh yeah, I've been to Hamburger Mary's. That's in um in Long Beach. Yeah, I have been there. So. I love it. Yeah, I'm love it. Love it. So you you let me know, and I will and I will definitely come and meet you. Actually, me and oh Ryan my God, will I'm come and meet you Let's down there. Do it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, so I love that. Thank no, you thank so, you so much, much for, for all of your knowledge. Like, Thank you so much for having me. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, my God. The the people don't even know what it took for us to actually <laughs> yeah. get this. Well, we've been over <laughs> a few times. Together. <laughs> right. right. We'll, we'll keep that between us. But thank, thank you so much for no that. No problem.